Fu Show here. Today I'm going to show you how to change a fuel filter on many Ford vehicles that use duckbill connectors. First thing I'm going to do is bleed out the pressure in the fuel system. To do that I'm going to pull the fuel pump relay. This particular vehicle is located in the engine compartment. Relay number two. Start the vehicle up. If there's still pressure in the system, the engine will start for a split second and die out. If you've let the vehicle sit for a few hours without running it, the fuel pressure will slowly bleed down and the engine may not start. If the engine doesn't start, the fuel pressure has already bled out on its own. In any case, when removing fuel lines, always treat them as if they were pressurized. Wear safety glasses and wrap the fitting you're removing with a shop rag to catch any fuel that may spray out. Loosen the gas cap to release any vapor pressure in the fuel tank. Before we continue, I'm going to explain the purpose of the check valve and how it maintains fuel pressure after the vehicle's been shut off. Here's the tank, here's the fuel level, here's the fuel pump, it sits in the tank. This is the fuel sock. It's a coarse fuel filter to prevent particulates from damaging the fuel pump. And here's the check valve. This is responsible for maintaining pressure in the fuel system after the vehicle's been shut off. It's a simple device. You have a housing, a spring, and a steel ball. This is the drawing of the valve at rest with the fuel pump off. When the fuel pump comes on, fuel pressure counteracts spring pressure, pushing the check ball up, unblocking the inlet passage which is blocked in this picture here, which allows high pressure fuel to flow out of the pump, through the fuel line, through the fuel filter, into the fuel rail. After the fuel pump shuts off, spring pressure pushes the check ball back down, blocking the inlet passage, which maintains high pressure in the fuel line. The purpose of the check valve is to allow quick starting of the engine. When you turn the key to the run position, the fuel pump is run for a few seconds and shut off. This is known as priming the system. This allows full fuel pressure to be available to the fuel injectors before you begin cranking, which allows for a quicker start. The reason why your engine may not start when you pull the fuel pump relay after letting the vehicle sit for a few hours is, the check valve doesn't seal perfectly and over an extended period of time will slowly bleed fuel pressure from the high pressure line back into the tank. On this vehicle, the fuel filter is located directly under the driver's seat on the frame rail. Now the setup is simple enough. The fuel filter is held to the bracket by a single hose clamp. What you may not be familiar with are these. These are called duckbill fittings. And they're pretty simple to remove. You'll see there's two little tabs. One there, one there. To remove them, you want to push back on them and then push them up and out. When you are finished pushing them up, you can then put your finger under this little tab area here to pull them out the rest of the way. Here's a little more detail on the removal of the duckbill clips. Here's a look at a brand new duckbill clip. Now what you want to do is spread apart the two tabs at the bottom, push it partially up, then you'll be able to grab the bill portion here, pull firmly, and the clip will come out. The reason why you need to pull firmly is there's a safety tab right here, right there that you need to break off. This is the reason why you have to replace these whenever you change your fuel filter, because when you remove it, you will break this tab off. This tab is there to make sure that this clip doesn't come out and your fuel line doesn't come off. Now, if you don't want to pull to break this tab off, you can also get a flathead screwdriver, put it underneath, give it a little twist and break that off or you can get a pair of needle nose pliers just put it under the tab and break it off same on this side push the tabs apart and then pull up
Be sure to have a clean catch pan under the filter to catch dripping fuel from the lines and for a place to dump the fuel in the filter after removal. You can dump the contents of the pan back into the fuel tank later. Now when you pull out the first line, not a bad idea to wrap a rag around it, soak up any gas that comes out. They just want to pull the fitting outward. Same thing on the other side. Remove the filter, just get a flathead screwdriver and loosen the clamp. Once the clamp is fully loosened, you can just slide the filter right out of the bracket. You'll notice on the new filter there's an arrow. That indicates fuel flow. The fuel tank is back this way, the engine is this way. So fuel will be flowing from the back of the vehicle to the front. So we want the arrow pointing in this direction towards the engine. The bracket and filter are also designed so the filter only sits properly in the bracket one way in the direction of proper flow. You want the flat side of the filter facing this tab on the bracket. While it's not easy to see, the left side of the filter is rounded while the right side is flat. There's also a rolled edge on the filter that won't sit in the bracket properly unless the flat side of the filter is facing the tab on the bracket. The new filter on the bracket. until it's snug. You grab the filter and you can't rotate it by hand or push it in or out. That's tight enough. Now the new filter came with new duckbill clips. They're simpler to install than they were to remove. Let's reattach the fuel lines. Just put them on each side and push them in straight. Same thing on the other side. Now you're going to reinstall the duckbill clips. Obviously you want the pointed end facing outward. Insert the clip. In the hole. Then just press down. And it'll clip in place. Same thing on the other side. You want to make sure that the pointed end is facing outward. Same process. Insert in the hole and press it down until it snaps. Slightly tug to make sure they're locked. There will be a slight bit of movement as you see here. This is normal. Pop the fuel pump relay back in. Retighten the gas cap. If you forget this on OBD2 vehicles manufactured after 1996, they'll throw a code for an evaporative emissions leak and set the check engine light. Now I'm going to reprime the fuel rail and fill the new fuel filter with fuel. To do that I'm going to turn the key to the run position and back four times, waiting for the fuel pump to run in between. You should hear the fuel pump when I turn it to the run position. It'll run for a few seconds and it'll turn off. Now I'm going to start the engine.
All right, I'm gonna shut it down. We'll go underneath and make sure we have no leaks. And as you can see, it's bone dry.